changing the movie a little bit. Um, we are in the process of um, screening it. Well, like adding this. or elevating. Sure, okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, and chromestrong.com, what we tell people is that you can go to that website and actually um, apply for a test screen. Um, and we're, we're just, you know, we believe this film is going to be a case of they told two friends and they told two friends, like the old screen cook commercial. So we're, we're eager to have that happen. You know, an associate just told me yesterday, it's like, oh, I'm going to talk to my son so was on the border of uh, Sundance Film Festival, right? And, and it's really just about getting word out and have people talk about it. Specifically, what we're looking to do is we're looking to add a hero crone voice. So basically, about a third to a halfway through, rather than Chris continue to narrate, to hand it off to a hero crone. So we're looking for a woman, probably a woman of color, to, to continue adding the diversity and, and bring a different voice to it, to add her voice and kind of carry the story forward to all of us women. So yeah, that's the, one of the things that we're looking for. Yeah, and the process of the, the story is Dominique struggling, asking me for help, me sort of discovering the stuff that didn't exist because I'm looking at it from a weird perspective. Um, and then it, it, it's for me to hand it back. And so if we add this additional character, that is that, that process of handing it over to the feminine for, for you guys to take it to where it's going to go next. Yeah, and then the second thing that we want to add is uh, graphics and animation. You know, not <coughs> animation, that can help bring the science all the way through. So it's like A to B to C, yeah. all the way to equals the wise woman hypothesis, and then how are we doing? Because there's a lot of heavy information, and so we want to make it easier for people to go all the way through. So that's right now we're finding the production company or the investor who helps us raise the money to do that. And then it'll be out. What happens is, is when a man is looking at these things, which I can't comprehend at all, there's a naive take to it. And so that's what sort of started these journeys. And my curiosity can never be fulfilled, but at least it's there. And there's a practical side to where we are in the movie making process. I had talked about this story for years and years and years with lots of people and didn't get the traction to make it. So we just decided we got to make it. And now we have something that is, yeah, people are debating, well, you know, the producer, Jonathan Sanger, um, he's amazing. And he's an L.A. guy, and he said to me, he said, oh, I love the film, it's really great, um, looking really good, but, you know, something, we got to get you out. <laughs> so, you know, which is true, and that's why we want to elevate it with this hero pro character. It's highly unlikely that fish are going to discover water, right? That's what they're in. They don't even understand that there could be something else. And sometimes, as women, we forget to look from that eagle view of what we're going through and the bigger meaning and all of that. And I can tell you an example. Just the other day, my other hat is I'm a nutritional chef. And because of that, I do nutritional studying all the time. And I was listening to a very famous menopause doctor who has a diet, all of that, and I was listening to her on a podcast, and I was, as I was going through some stuff, Chris was coming into the room hearing, and he says, stop a second, and he says, you know, maybe there's the forgetting of the Venus statue, right? You saw the Venus statue, so The that, Venus figurine for the movie. The Venus that figurine, figurine sorry, not statue, but the figurine. So... When we started, or when we were celebrating the feminine, we were celebrating the post-menopausal feminine, and look at what it looked like. So could it be that right now, in the medicine of menopause, which is so new, Wolf Udian, who started NAMS, National Association of Menopausal Medicine, is alive. How, how is that? Right? Shouldn't it have been like three generations ago? No, it's so new. We're looking at it maybe from this societal that pushes women to celebrate 
that 20 year span where we're most fertile. Hello, 20 years out of 80 years and that's what we're like focusing on. So sometimes it needs somebody else's perspective and uh, I'll be honest, he is on the spectrum. So when he focuses, he hyper focuses and he is able to see things from a different place because he's outside of it. Because he's, I don't know, so I'm going to figure out. That's why it ended up being him as a director, because of who he is. We have three generations here, and my mom whispers to me on the side and says, oh, I could think I didn't have any issues with menopause. I said, Mom, I lived it with you. You used to flip tables and chairs. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> she forgot about it. But, you know, stepping into this next stage of my life, and having the support of Crone and building this nation of awareness and understanding that women have to take power into our own hands again so we can survive as a species is powerful and I thank you. Thank you. I really loved the last the last woman that you were speaking with in uh, the movie about sort of repurposing and re- um, taking over the power of these words. And it's actually a very beautiful thing in a lot of the cultures, which I think that you pointed out. Um, I I like to think of it a bit more of sort of the high priestess wise woman or a hot crone, you know? I mean, I don't think that you have to. You know, that's something that those of us that are, you know, I'm, 50, I'm 53 and I don't feel like a crone in the classic sense, but I am very much connected to the to the um, divine feminine and the goddess tradition of that word. So um, I guess where I'm going with that is I think it's a really interesting and a really powerful thing to have, especially many of the women you had speaking about that you were interviewing, talk about reclaiming this crone and re, um, reframing it for this new, we are a generation of women that are stepping into this role um, with historical awareness with um, a lot of things at our fingertips, hormones and other other ways we will handle menopause. It's no longer something that we're supposed to just, you know, forget about or silence, you know, the file or suffer through. It it isn't the way anymore. And in fact, we, I mean, um, my partner Rika, who also started Body and Soul with me, um, talked about the to a menopause conference. We don't have to suffer anymore. So then we just get to be these really cool wise women. And I think that's amazing. Like, I am down with being a non-suffering, <laughs> wise woman. That no longer has that maturity of the world, nurturing keep everybody alive. I think that's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's my perspective. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to you just... You need to talk. Yeah. 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 Everybody else wants to talk, but the word crone, I find so fascinating because it is a descriptive word that was around for a long time. And it didn't have any negativity to it. It was then co opted to bully. Mm -hmm. And now it's sort of dormant in a way. I was going to say, respectfully, I'm a 36 year old here. I didn't even know the word prone really until I looked into the movie and everything. It was not a word that I've seen. So I never had a chance to be, I guess, villainized mm -hmm. to me. So to me, it just is power. I yeah. think, like, yeah. because of the way that I'm seeing it now. So it kind of shows how, you know, they can take it from one thing, but like if, they're, if it's falling off, then it's going to come back in a different and by this time, you guys can own that. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Kind of like how I took bitch back. You know, I mean, I am a business bitch. Like, what do you want from me? I love that. It's the evolution of the new consciousness happening on the planet that you know. And, and I'm forgetting her name. It's coming Camila Paglia, but it's not. It's another feminist writer who brought in the the mythos of crone as the wise woman, crone coming from the crown of wisdom. And really at the beginning, like I wanted to call it witch because that is the original word for wise woman. What were the witches in the town? They were the herbologists, they were the naturopaths, they were the midwives, but it, if we put witch on it, then it goes into a whole different thing because that word has not gone dormant. It has actually gotten a power of its own, but on a spiritual side in a different way. So that's why crone. We have our own version.
versions of what we describe is a chrome. Right? So it would be nice to kind of explore maybe different cultures and and what that word and what that terminology means. I mean, my mom to me is this huge amazing is this amazing maternal figure, and at the age of seventy three, no one would ever say she's that age. But as you were saying about your own mom, she looks at me and she's like, "What?" I was fine. I, didn't think, you know, I had to really think back to that. Everybody, every culture deals with it a, sort of a different way. But in the movie, you did state that it's something that if you come out on the other side, you're in, you know, in this new beautiful position. But thank God for NAMS, for North American Menopause Society, for there's a menopause boards that doctors can take because that didn't exist. Mm -hmm. didn't have education on, on this was so minimal. And I, I knew so much more about how to take care of a man and their erectile dysfunction than I did <laughs> <laughs> you know, And you know, the government pays for me, Viagra and Cialis and everything, but it came to women. Like, I couldn't treat hotflashes. 90% of drug research, and these are medicines that come out, everything, even breast cancer medicines, are initially tested on all male animals. Because it's less expensive and takes less time. Because for female animals, they have to take into account the waves of hormones. So it takes more time, right? Then it goes to male subjects. Even for some things that are then used for breast cancer. Insane, right? So we are so behind. I'm so glad you said that because uh, I just got diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh. And so I'm going through that. Right, right now, and there is a medicine that they prescribe to me, and it's a whole story. But it's not—it's not the right medicine for my particular level that I have, but it is for another one. And they have billions of dollars in that industry. I don't know why they haven't done the research for it. So I, I you right. can help me for the reason why. Yeah, that's why. And yeah. it, it's. Well, it's, it's just, this is starting to change, but... I mean, you look at the research that we've poured in the heart disease, right? What is that? What is that? Yeah, the amount of money yeah. that goes towards menopausal women research, it's like, what was it, 0.4%? Which is, it's like $11 million a year. It's nothing. It's nothing yeah. For research. Well, first of all, thank you for making the film. Oh, yeah, well, you know, making the film is a huge... Commitment. So, independent filmmaking is so essential, I think, for our culture, especially if we're going to teach the world and young people um, new ideas. No, not fashion then, because it's an energy, I think it's a consciousness. And I feel like, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's something in the mind, it's a thought process. And I think or we can shift that thought, thought process through education, through compassion, inclusivity, through circles and discussions. Um, and you can see it already in the younger population. You know, I know in my population, I, I was brought up in a very strict patriarchal family, um, but I think the, the role playing is changing. And it's in the film, women are starting to work, they're starting to own their body, bodies and live their bodies. Respectfully, I hope it does kind of. Yes. I yes. wanted to. I wanted to. <laughs> um, as a 36 year old, I mean, I'm, I'm on social media. It's like a big part yeah. of like my life is on social media. And just last week, I had 27 comments that I was too old for children, that I was menopausal, that I was this, that I was that. And like, that was the insult. Like, that was the insult of the day. Which is 27 <laughs> from one person. 27 from one person. Guess what that for one person was? Oh, man. <laughs> so worried about my <laughs> fertility. You know, and to use it as an insult, and I was like, what a wild concept to me, you know, so I'm like, you know what, you should be offended, I hope you're offended because you offend me all the time, so good luck. <laughs> Sitting with you, obviously the youngest, gorgeous, you know, entrepreneur, do you fear the crumb face? Not at all. Do you fear that Not at all. And what from this film was helpful for you to educate you? Yeah, so much of it. <laughs> Can you share something? I mean, overall, just like the 
it, it interests me because I, I, I never really had a fear of it, and I was never really, like, afraid whether I was going to have kids, whether I don't have kids, I'm 36. So for me, like, seeing this, I feel like they're all, like, afraid of, like, that aging process, whereas I'm just like, joke, we don't have to pay for birth control, we don't have to do this, we don't have to look at that, we don't have to check everything. So for me, it, you know, it was very informational and inspirational that I feel like I could, like, share this kind of content with my friends who are, like, you know, a little bit more stuck in the in the ways that they were trained to be, and the way that they were trained to understand things. Um, I think it kind of like, it is a good visual representation of like how I feel very relaxed about it. Like, it is what it is. <laughs> what, what, did they, what do you feel like the underlying essence of the fear that I mean, I think that like, especially because I work in fashion, um, everybody is supposed to stay young forever. And uh, so the amount of, you know, the amount of times I hear my friends being like, oh, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to do that because I got to pay for Botox this month. You know what I mean? Like the things that they'll do in order to like maintain that like youngness or that attractiveness. Um, I think that it's like for it to go back to being celebrated to age. And like, that's something I'll always say, like when I'm in my groups with the 30 stuff, they'll be like, oh, you know, like, um, you know, you're not, you're not old or whatever to make some joke around about being old. And I'm like, I'm not saying that as an insult to myself. I'm, I'm lucky I'm here at 36, you know, with the way that everything is. So I'm like, no, I, I think that aging is beautiful and it's supposed to be. And so whenever like, I'll be like, oh, I'm old or I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling old today. I'm like, no, I'm feeling smart today. Like, I'm feeling wise today. Like, I don't mean it in like a bad way. Um, but a lot of women will be in the group and be like, oh, I'm too old to find a man. I'm too old for it. And it's just like, it's that like rhetoric that like, okay, because we're not, you know, we're single at 50, we're single at 60. Like these women think it's like over. And I'm like, you're so lucky. <laughs> you're so lucky. Like I love being alone. I live for it. And I did just start dating someone and he is amazing. But I'm also like, holy shit, somebody in my space all the time. So, you know, like, I don't know. There's like a part of me that just really loves like that level of independence. And I wish that like more women would embrace it as being like a fun experience. As opposed to like something they're supposed to be afraid of, being alone, being old, looking old, etc. And, and I personally think that this movie and what we're saying insults patriarchy, not men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a way that we explain it in our couple is, you know, for those of us around our age, old TVs and the level of color pixels that they have, right? And new TVs. So now you know, back then, it maybe had 25 versions of the screen, right? Now there's thousands of tonalities and tones within those pixels. That is the difference between an estrogen brain. We see those tonalities all the time, and it's hard for us to shut them down. So when we walk into a room, we'll see everything that has to be done, all the messes at once. He has a more focused level of pixels. So when we work together, it works the best because sometimes I need to go to him and I'm like, I am saying this. And it's overwhelming. Me. Back a bit. Exactly. Yeah. And so I can explain to him and he goes, Great. Yeah. Right? He points me yeah, towards no. and I'm like, I do find that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, oh, well, that, that seems a lot more simple than I was making it. Like, exactly. <laughs> all right. But if you take our view out of how we're going to run society, it's too. Yeah. Now there's only yeah. supposed to be two sexes and two senses of gender and two sexuality. No! <laughs> you know? Have our openness brought in together with their pointedness, and then we can go forward and hopefully fix some of the shit show that we're in. In, in, in wanting to tell this story, I do, I, I, I was, we started to show it then, right? So tell the story, I want to tell this thing, I feel, you know, I did a movie that I said, so okay, let me, let me try menopause now. Um, and what, I was thinking about how men are going to react, and it, it's been a great surprise for me. Because in every screening, the men that are there have told me, thank you for hearing us, right? And the bully patriarchy, what they're good at is a limited number of these fuckers are really loud. And it it gets me so angry. They're so loud and take so much fucking room. But there's not so many of them. There's more people like us in the mail who are just waiting to be heard. And and, And and who want to work together. My father needs to watch I remember like when I got my period the 
first time, it was just very kind of like hush hush. There was no big. <laughs> I get my dad headaches, and I've had them for like eight months. And finally, I was like, "Oh, this is really bad." I went to the doctor. She's like, "How long has this been happening?" I'm like, I don't know, eight months. And she's like, "You've had a headache every day for eight months, and you just got here." And I was like, "Yeah, I'm busy. I got shit to do. Like, I don't got time to stop every couple of times." <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I have enough time to stop and take some Excedrin, but like not to like make fourteen doctor's appointments. I don't have time. Like, you know, so you just kind of learn to. Here, this is takeaway personally for me. In which I have been like spreading in bathrooms to women. Like, no, I think we all need to say that if you are seeing a physician who isn't asking you at a certain age, and or you're asking about your talking about your transition, you know, hormonal transition, or, and you are being told that it'll that you'll get through it, that it's just part of it, that you should just you know more or less suck it up. That that is not the way anymore, and you should find another position because yes. there are many physicians, most of them women, um, not just gynecologists, cardiologists, um, brain researchers, neurologists, um, across the board, sex therapists. There are a lot of people doing really innovative work with low budgets that are trying to shift the way that we experience menopause, and it just hasn't cut up. Physicians are busy. Lots of physicians have been practicing. I mean, you can say that. So I, I think make yeah. sure you find somebody credentialed to do it. And I appreciate that you had a yeah. that at work from Yale and you know, other great facilities. But um, there's a lot on the internet. There are a lot of people that are speaking loudly on TikTok and celebrities, and they don't have the data behind it a lot of times. You know, there's some um, different whether it's Chinese um, medicine and Ayurveda, but there's different uh, natural ways to do things. But if you're looking for the clear evidence-based data, then I would find a practitioner that's board certified in menopause. Or I just wanted to say one thing about your mom, your loving mom. Uh, it might be a generational thing for your mom, too. Like I know from, I don't know how old she is, but I know from my mom's generation, that came to female issues, they were kind of silenced a little bit, mm -hmm. and then they had their best friend and they spoke about it, but then they went to a male MD. Right? 100%. Right? And then they went home and they played the role of the good wife, or they worked. And so if there was any physical ailment that was a little off, they probably carried it deep within it somewhere. So I know with my mom, I still see that in her, and I sometimes go, wow, I'm just acting like my mom. I want to heal that because I feel like when we do talk about it, when we see a film, we gather like this, there's another energy happening right here that's healing all of us, and I think that's essential. You're here. When I was putting that sequence together, so so my editing suite is near where our living room is, and I'm doing this thing, and Dominique and my daughter Gaia, um, they they come running in, they're like, what? Oh, okay. I was so angry. Yeah, that was Playtex and Disney. Um, and then, and, and women of you know a certain age that when you in health class that was the show that that was what you were shown. You'll be able um, to smile more. And yeah. be able to <laughs> I think my exact sentence was pull it together. Let's see what what I pull out of you, yeah, and no, I, let's I, see I, if you I can pull it together. I was you know, under the threat of real bodily harm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>